Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there tonight and certainly had yourselves a great day and I hope you all are having a great week out there so far. Thank you all for tuning in this evening as we discuss many things that's coming up over the next few days. Um, we'll talk about this Gulf low and what it means for the Deep South and even a severe weather threat across areas of Florida, even a tornado risk that we need to talk about, especially for tomorrow. But this will bring a lot of heavy rain, even gusty winds. This will be a pretty strong low pressure. And uh, just, just bring it across areas of the southeast. For some folks, this will be your first rain you've seen in three to four weeks. And uh, you'll basically go from bone dry to just a soaking for certain areas of the deep south. We'll get detail with this. How much rain can some of these areas see? And then we'll discuss a system that's already moving into the Pacific Northwest. Okay, and this will sweep across areas in the northern portion of the lower 48 and surface low will develop um, in the eastern sections, northeastern sections of Colorado, and then will become very dynamic, meaning uh, you'll have snow on one side of this low and then severe weather on the other. So we'll get in very good detail on that for you folks and we'll break it down and then we'll cap it all off by discussing the cold air that will come in behind all this action that we'll have to deal with over the next few days. So <clears throat> we'll go right back to below average temperatures for the Eastern US and even areas of the Central US. So if you're a big fall weather fan, uh, there's no end in sight for the cooler than average temperatures. So we'll break it all down for you guys. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Definitely take advantage of the timestamps in this video. I'll break it down very nicely for you folks who just wanna skip ahead. Um, because there will be many sectioned off areas of the video that we will talk about and break down in detail. Um, but if you guys, more importantly, got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. So let's talk about all the players out there on the field right now. As you can tell, it's getting dull on this side of the screen because the sun is setting uh, from east to west. We got Lydia, which has rapidly strengthened over the last 12 hours. I believe it was a Category 1 hurricane when we made the video this morning. Now a Category 3 major hurricane about to slam the western coast of Mexico. Okay, what does this have to do with everything else going on? Well, this helps to provide a moist feed even into this Gulf low, which is developing right into here. Okay, but it looks like the cloud field from Lydia is stretching all the way into the, off the coast of the southeast, right? In fact, I live here in South Carolina, and some clouds has moved in this evening. Uh, but really, it's not directly from Lydia. It's just you have an active southern jet right now, which is allowing basically from just a big a push of moisture return into the back into the Gulf states, back into the deep south and the south central U.S., Therefore, you got a lot of cloud cover and the humidity is steadily increasing in a lot of these areas. So between this low, obvious low pressure, that's a category three hurricane and this low pressure, this will help aid in a lot of moisture into um, basically this area of the south. OK, so we'll take that off your screen. And at the same time, it doesn't show up as well on satellite. But you see all this white over here in the Pacific Northwest. This is our energy moving in with an upper trough that's going to dig down with a surface load that's going to develop probably somewhere here. And this is going to bring a lot of dynamic weather across the northern plains and the Great Plains over the next few days. But this will dig down into here and eventually bring a lot of cool air behind it. So that's kind of what's going on. I know that's everywhere. And um, sometimes it's not even needed to show you guys this, but I feel like it's important to look at the players on the field out there. They're not showing up very well, except Lydia, obviously, which is a major hurricane. But, um, you know, speaking of Lydia, look at this thing. I mean, it is about to make landfall now. Um, it's really strengthening upon landfall. It looks like it might be weakening a little bit right before landfall, but this is a powerful hurricane. And uh, definitely wishing you guys the, uh, the best here in Western areas of Mexico. Definitely hunker down. This is moving in quick. The good news about Mexico is the higher elevation, so this will rapidly weaken as it moves over land mass and this low level uh, circulation moves over these tropical systems. They do not like abrupt changes in elevation from low to high, and uh, they're basically going to go over some higher plateaus and higher mountain ranges, and this will get shredded apart very quickly. Um, but uh, speaking on uh, all this moisture, uh, that's really going to get bubbling up here in the Gulf of Mexico. We keep on going here, 
And uh, we'll start off by looking at the HRRR model. We will really focus on this model, really, because it almost shows the entirety of the entire system from start to finish. And we'll start off tomorrow morning. This is Wednesday morning around 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Central Time. Here's a lot of the moisture already creeping into the Houston area, taking over you know, most of uh, southern Louisiana. Not a lot of heavy rain initially, but I think most of Louisiana... Most of the heavy rain is going to be in the southeast portion of the state. I've already seen a comment saying, what about central Louisiana? I I'm going to be straight up with you guys. As you, as I get this in motion, there's a lot of people that's going to whiff on the rain that really need it. Okay, we were hoping this was going to trend further north, and it still could. This rain shield, just like we see in the winter, a lot of times with these low pressures in the Gulf, they trend north in time. So this rain shield could very well be a little bit further north, maybe a little bit closer up to Jackson and Meridian. But the latest eight triple R model is getting it going tomorrow morning. A lot of heavy rain moves into the bayou, you know, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, uh, even Lafayette, Louisiana. But it looks like you folks on like northern central Louisiana as we're moving into around the lunchtime period tomorrow. Ah, man, it, it looks like a pretty stout cutoff. I mean, you look even in Mississippi. OK, you know, I would say what what is the Interstate 20 corridor right here? Man, it looks like if you're south of it, you might get some appreciable rain, but you really got to get way down here to like Hattiesburg, what is it, uh, Gulfport, to really get some substantial, much needed rain. Unfortunately for like Jackson, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going up, what is that, Interstate 55, not a whole lot of rain. You get into Alabama, and just with the axis of where the slow pressure is going, which is continuing to strengthen right down here, this is moving more so southwest and northeast. So areas further north, further east, will get more rain, if that makes sense. For example, you see the axis here, southern, southern Mississippi seeing more rain. But you move over and you're thinking, well, why isn't central Mississippi seeing rain and central Alabama is? It's because this low pressure is moving this way. So... We take it into Wednesday afternoon. We get into Wednesday evening. I'll stop it here. It is raining pretty steadily in the bottom two-thirds of Alabama. Even some very heavy rain moving into southern Mississippi, running like cats and dogs around New Orleans tomorrow evening. And then the real heavy rain begins to take over the Big Bend region, the panhandle of Florida. We're even starting to get some severe weather down here in Florida, potentially, especially when we get later in the evening. This rain is already beginning to take over most of Georgia by tomorrow evening. This begins to creep into South Carolina where we will get some of our first rains. It has not rained at my house since September 17th. This will be my first rains that I've seen since then. So it's just going to be very weird seeing rainfall. I haven't been this excited about rain in a long time. Um, I wouldn't relate it to being excited like about seeing snow, but um, I'm certainly excited to see some raindrops tomorrow evening, that's for sure. Uh, but the rain begins, based off the HRRR model, begins to take over all of Georgia. You start to get some heavy rain in southern Alabama. Okay, I'm talking about down here like in Dothan, uh, even Montgomery, Point South especially. A lot of heavy rain begins to fall. Mobile, maybe even some claps of thunder. And then we get some really areas of really heavy rain that begins to take over the northern section of Florida. Rain begins to take over most of South Carolina overnight tomorrow night, especially the low country of South Carolina. Embedded heavy rains here in the Alabama-Georgia state line near like the Columbus region, Auburn, Alabama. And, uh, you know, you're getting into the wee hours of the morning, Thursday morning. And even you even got some storms moving on shore into the Big Bend region. Raining pretty good as you're waking up to mo uh, Thursday morning. A lot of heavy rain falling from Myrtle Beach to Charleston pretty much down to Savannah, Jacksonville. You get down to with the low pressure is moving right over. In fact, this, this is your textbook placement of a low pressure if you want a good old classic uh, southern slider in the southeast. If you don't know what a southern slider is, that's basically um, where you get deep south winter weather, uh, snow, ice, whatever it may be. And uh, this is really just your, just a winter type of low pressure. I mean, honestly, but getting into Thursday and then we're starting to get into Thursday afternoon. You're still dealing with severe weather, I think, in central Alabama. And for you folks saying, Mitch, you, you really skimmed over the severe weather part. I have a section just for that. Rainfall expected um, for the deep south states. I mean, here it is. You can tell the axis really shifts from southwest to northeast. I really think, in fact, they've kind of cut down the totals a little bit, even for these areas. But, you know, if you're, what is that, uh, the, the Lake Charles region, maybe a quarter inch of rain if you're lucky. Alexandria, big time cut off, not a whole lot of rain. You get down to Lafayette, maybe a quarter to a half inch rain. Baton Rouge, half inch. New Orleans, maybe over an inch. You start to get into like the Gulfport, Hattiesburg area, half inch to an inch and a half of rain. 
and then you start to get into southern Alabama. I think more rain than this could fall in southern Alabama. But, you know, Montgomery, uh, an inch, inch and a so of rain. But, you know, you start to make your way into Florida and southern Georgia. Man, this is between now and Sunday morning. A lot of rain could fall. Macon, two to three inches of rain. Jacksonville, two to three inches of rain. Um, these areas that got hit by Udalia, I mean, three to four inches of rain. A lot of rain going to fall. I mean, you, you start to get down here into, you know, Gainesville, down to Orlando, three to four inches of rain. Just the same general theme. Lake City, a lot, a lot of rain, guys. Now, you move a little bit further north, big time cutoff. You're wondering about Atlanta, maybe half inch. Three-fourths of an inch of rain. Columbia and Augusta will be a tough area. Augusta, maybe over an inch of rain. Columbia, it's it's tough. And I live there. I live here in Columbia, and I'm not sure if we're going to get an inch of rain or just a quarter inch of rain. It could vary. But, you know, you get into the low country of South Carolina. If you live there, beneficial rains are definitely coming. Two to three inches of rain, a good old soaker coming up for about a good 24 to 36 hour period. It's not going to rain heavy for that long, but you get what I'm saying. Definitely a lot of rain in that period. Let's talk about the severe weather threat tomorrow for Florida. There is a slight risk, guys. This does include Tampa Bay. I mean, St. Petersburg up to Spring Hill, um, almost up to, uh, um, well, it does almost pretty much go all the way to Orlando, but not quite, not quite up to Gainesville, uh, Sarah's down to Sarasota. Uh, not quite down to Fort Myers, but anyways, I don't want to get too specific with this. There's a slight risk, level two out of five, and this is really driven off a damaging wind threat and a tornado threat. And we'll look at the tornado threat first. Um, there is your good old classic tropical 5% risk of a tornado. And you're thinking, Mitch, what do you mean by tropical? Well, typically on um, the dirty side of these low pressures, on the southern side, southeast side, you get the dirty side of these low pressures. You get, honestly, they, they bring their own like low-level jet, own kinematics, own thermodynamics. And what I'm trying to say is you have a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location in this brown area right here. This little tucked in western uh, western side of Florida, Tampa Bay included in this. So you could get some water spouts to move on shore. You're going to have to be careful tomorrow, especially late tomorrow afternoon and evening into the overnight hours in this region. And, you know, you look at the radar, a closer look at South Florida. And here they come. You know, you're starting to get into about the 4 p.m. range. Some of these you want to watch out for. Initially, okay, some areas, especially the further north you get into Florida, it'll just be a good old fashioned heavy rain, maybe rumble of thunder. But you start to look at some of these cells around 6, 7, 8 p.m., start to move into the clear water, St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay region, surrounding Sarasota areas, Lakeland. You got to watch out for these storms later this evening, tomorrow evening. These will have a chance to produce, produce very quick tropical spin ups. And typically, these aren't very strong tornadoes, they last very, they're very quick. Um, but they come up fast and typically they're rain wrapped. They're really low tops. You can barely see them. They just look like lowering. Be aware of these. If you get under a tornado warning tomorrow evening, late tomorrow night in this region of Florida, uh, don't be alarmed. I mean, be aware because I mean, this is kind of expected. And then we get into tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm at Thursday morning and uh, we have some more storms that will sweep across Florida and uh, we'll have to watch this, see if this uptrends. But if we look at the updraft, Felicity Swath, typically this doesn't show up very well on here when it comes to these um, when it comes to these uh, tropical tornado threats. But it does show little splotches here and there showing a rotating updraft with some of these sails. So we need to be mindful of this for sure, um, of this uh, tornado threat. That's for sure. So there, there is that risk um, for Thursday. A marginal risk. I mean, I, most likely this will get be a two percent risk of a tornado for Thursday. When I, I'm on, almost can guarantee this is what this risk will be driven off of a two percent risk of a tornado. So I have to watch again Thursday for a very small tornado risk across Florida. So if you're looking for a time frame for the highest tornado risk in Florida, I would say late, late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. Basically, I want to mention this too. Very strong winds. Or it's possible, I wouldn't say very strong, but very gusty winds associated with this low. This will be a strengthening low upon landfall. And, uh, I mean, here it comes. Uh, this is, let's back it up. This is around 10, 11 p.m. tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, tomorrow evening. We got 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, not sustained, but wind gusts moving into the panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, southern Mississippi. And this begins to take over to late tomorrow night into Thursday morning um southern georgia northern florida and i mean these are some gusty winds this is probably right where the low pressure will move on shore somewhere into the big bend regions 
So for any kind of loose pine trees that are already damaged from Edalia down here, you you just want to make sure that things are fastened down. I know there's probably a lot of weak trees in this region. I, I, I chased Edalia, so I would know it looked like a bomb went off in certain areas just um, south of Perry, down to the coastline there. But you're going to get some gusty winds, especially Thursday morning. 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. One thing I have not mentioned is there's still a chance that this could develop into a tropical system. It's very low though. It's very, very low. But this is going to pack a punch of a stronger low pressure. Gusty winds in southern to central Georgia, southern Alabama, and all of Florida. Anywhere from 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. Okay, it'll almost act as a weak tropical storm making landfall into the Big Bend regions of Florida. So definitely be aware of this for sure. Now let's talk about this system that's going to move into the northern plains. Let's talk about the ingredients first. We'll start off uh, when, uh, tomorrow afternoon. So what you see on your screen is the mid-level jet, mid-level flow aloft. So, you know, one thing we call this is the exit region. So we'll get this going here and we're getting into... Um, we're getting into tomorrow uh, late afternoon, tomorrow evening, and then we're getting to the overnight hours. And here it is. This is this exit region, which is basically the right exit region of a jet, a mid-level jet. So these are winds several, several thousand feet up in the in the um, atmosphere, gusting to 40, um, 50 to 60 miles per hour. I meant 60, 50 to 60 knots which is like 55 to 65 miles per hour or more. So this is a pretty stout mid-level jet. This will create a lot of forcing and a lot of wind energy for these storms. So I would bet that you're probably going to get some storm development into this region probably late Thursday night into the wee hours of the morning. Um, I'm sorry, late Wednesday night into the wee hours of the morning Thursday um, into this region right here. Okay, we'll watch for this, but you see how you got these uh, line circling up. This is the, the this is because of a development of a surface low that's beginning to develop across areas of uh, southeast Wyoming and northeast Colorado. This will be the main driver of a very dynamic storm system. And even as we're getting into Thursday morning, this mid-level jet continues to do nothing but increase with a strengthening low pressure right in here. You combine those kinematics for tomorrow with uh, this pool of moist air at the surface. These are dew points, and um, we have. Basically a warm front that's draped across areas in Nebraska and Iowa. This will separate pretty dry air with decently moist air. So we got some moist air building in overnight tomorrow night. So we got dew points in the 60s into this region. Much higher down here, but with a surface low developing way up here, you won't have much forcing for storms down here. So dew points in the upper 50s, low 60s is just enough juice for some storms in the atmosphere for late tomorrow night into Thursday morning. But as we're moving into Thursday, which we'll talk about here in a second, you will certainly have a bigger threat. But this is the threat for tomorrow, a marginal risk. We already talked about Florida. Level one out of five, marginal risk of severe weather. Not a big deal. Tornado threat doesn't even show up below 2%. Wind threat and hell threat, a 5% respectfully each. Now, if anything, I wouldn't be surprised if a hell threat um, makes this jump up to a slight rest when we wake up tomorrow morning. I think most of these storms will get going in this region later tomorrow night. And uh, here it goes. Here comes all this energy flying. You see all the snow flying in the higher elevations, these convective showers that could bring some rain snow mix, but I think even some even some small hail. In fact, I would bet there's going to be a, a, a lot of small hail associated with some of these showers and storms right in here in eastern Wyoming, western South Dakota, western areas in Nebraska. But what I want you to watch here is these big storms that explode here in northeast areas in Nebraska, areas of southeast um, South Dakota and even extreme western sections of Iowa. Um, and look at the time frame. It's, it's around the midnight time frame. These could produce large hail, gusty winds. And that's why you have that marginal risk. It's for these storms to develop later tomorrow night. So we could get some big storms ongoing in southern South Dakota and all those other areas I just mentioned um, late tomorrow night. And we're waking up to it again Thursday morning. Most of the snow tomorrow you see these little splotches of blue showing up on those higher elevations will fall in those higher elevations. The snow levels have not dropped yet um, substantially. Uh, they will drop tomorrow night into, to, into Thursday. And then we'll waken up, I think, Thursday morning to this heavy rain switching to heavy wet snow in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And a lot of snow falling in southern areas of, of Wyoming uh, and western areas of Wyoming, and even snow falling 
in um, kind of the northern areas of the Front Range, the northern sections of Colorado where these higher elevations are. So snowfall between now and Thursday morning, okay, can find mostly these higher elevations, but areas could get 8 to 12, 16, maybe some areas could get 2 feet of snow. It's very possible with this just between now and the next not not 24 hours between now and Thursday morning. So that would be what 36 hours um, or so. So now the severe weather threats for day three, which is Thursday, could be some more substantial. It's in response to the same surface low. It shifts a little bit, but not much. The surface low just kind of spins around. It's kind of blocked in place, and the severe weather threat won't dramatically move eastward. So we got this slight risk, which includes Omaha. Um, it gets down and digs down into Kansas with some other areas. It includes Topeka, Lawrence, the St. Joseph area, slight risk up to Omaha, Lincoln. Um, you got a marginal risk surrounding this. So what is this because? It's, you're probably going to get a risk of a tornado. tornadoes. Not very high, I don't think. But you're going to get damaging winds and hail. I think you'll have a risk of all hazards. Will this increase? Not sure. Not quite sure. But what we do know is we can only look at the NAM. And here comes the low right here starting off Thursday morning. And this is that classic look and spin. You see how you have action, and I'm about to get this in motion here again. See how you have action moving um, east to west, and then it's wrapping around this low, and then you've got this action that's moving um, more south to north. This is that low pressure, and here it is. Okay, snow falling in one half. Okay, the western areas in Nebraska, severe storms in the eastern areas in Nebraska. All right, so here comes these storms developing very quickly. And along this surface low right here, this LUC, these storms have a chance to be significant, produce some pretty nasty, severe weather from Omaha down to those same areas I just mentioned in northeast Kansas, uh, eastern, I'm sorry, western Iowa. And uh, these will have maxed out kinematics. Now, you're going to be lacking thermodynamics, these surface temperatures, these higher moisture levels, and higher cape levels. Cape levels will be very skinny. And I'll show you what I mean by skinny. But you keep this going. This will bring an area of storms through Iowa into Missouri. Snow falling in the other areas. And we'll talk more about the snow here in a second. So you look at this mid-level jet, the same thing I just showed you. And, but we're, we're starting off Thursday morning instead. Look at this surface low strengthening. And look at this stout, these stout wind profiles. I mean, you got right here in this region a mid-level jet over 100 knots. Okay. And this moves over these regions. So I really think as we're getting into Thursday evening, you got a, a mid-level jet. Winds, winds are basically going, guys, like 90 to 95, 100 miles per hour, several thousand feet up in the air, several, several thousand feet up in the air um, in this region. So a lot of wind energy in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And there's going to be a lot of wind energy. I don't have the low-level jet up, but I'm, I'm not going to pull it up just because it, pivotal weather is so slow and it lags. Um, but a lot of wind energy in this area you see here. Okay, stout southwesterly flow flying over this region, providing a lot of wind energy for any storms, which means you're going to have a threat for damaging wind. So maxed out kinematics. What about the, the thermodynamics? Okay, the dew points. Well, you've got a pretty skinny corridor of higher dew points that rise into the low to mid 60s, right all the way up into to just about to just about the Lincoln and Omaha area. Okay, but there's a triple point right in here. This is basically where your best kinematics are and your best kinematics, your, your highest low level moisture meet all the way up to the surface low. Okay, so in here, you're probably going to have a very skinny corridor in response to this better low level moisture of higher cape levels. And you can actually see it here. It's very small. Okay, but it's there. Look how small it is. It is. It needs to hit the weight room. It is very, uh, it's lacking leg day. That's for sure. But in this little corridor, you have 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram of cape in this region. This will provide enough oomph for these storms, that's for sure. But just for a very small area, okay? And like central to eastern Kansas, even up to the actual low pressure, which is up here in Kansas at this point, and south, I'm sorry, Nebraska and southeast Nebraska here. Now you look at um, the significant tornado parameter. Um, and it, you know, it spikes into here. You got a, a two, um, you know, it's, it's certainly not very high. Uh, so I don't think the tornado threat is going to be very high with this setup, but you do have that area where that Cape is showing up. So that's the update of what we know about the severe weather threat. Now, what about the snow uh, threat? We're starting off Thursday morning, a lot of snow falling on these higher elevations of Wyoming, but what's, what I'm really fascinated in 
is this western area, Nebraska. Okay, you guys, you know, this isn't totally unusual, but Cheyenne, you guys are going to see some snow. Scott's Bluff, watch out, could see some snow. How much? It's difficult with these surface lows when you're dealing with marginal temperatures, but what we do know is a lot of snow could fall and pile up very quick tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that Thursday is not tomorrow. Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon, the Black Hills. Look at all the snow falling Thursday afternoon, evening into Wyoming. And, uh, I mean, it could snow even into southeast, even outside the Black Hills and southeast, I'm sorry, southwest South Dakota. I mean, the snow line is, is getting pretty far into central areas of Nebraska. Could snow into northeast areas of Colorado as we're getting into Thursday night. So, you know, if you live along the Sterling area, the Interstate 76, what is that, Julesburg, uh, certainly into Sydney, um, Nebraska, I mean, you guys could see some snow. Um, and it only goes all the way out to about midnight um, Thursday night, but... Man, it's still snowing in some of these areas. Very dynamic setup. How much snow could fall? Um, well, this is the blend of all models. Okay, I think this is a respect, uh, a respectful thing to, to kind of respectable thing to look at in this uh, situation. And it does show a little bit of snow accumulation in western Nebraska. Shows a lot of snowfall accumulation into areas of the Black Hills. And then a lot of snow is going to pile up in the northern areas of the mountains here in Colorado. And these higher elevations could get. I mean, 8 to 20 inches of snow, I, I would bet, especially really high up. Might be the first um, snowfall of the year in like, um, uh, in like Cheyenne and place like that. Fort Collins could certainly see some snow. Um, Denver, it's going to be tough. I mean, we, we need to see what's going to happen. But there is winter storm watches up where confidence is the highest, like in the Black Hills where a lot of snow is going to fall. But this is kind of one of those setups that's very microclimate based, meaning it just depends on where you are elevation wise. Cold air behind this. We take a look at dew points. These are not temperatures. This shows us where the boundary of the cold front is the best. So we're getting into a Friday. You notice dew points are creeping well into the 60s, even the 70s into the deep south. You'll notice it'll be very humid waking up like in the Carolinas, Florida. As we're waking up Saturday morning, you're thinking, where's the fall air for, uh, for our Saturday for fall football? Well, here it is. Dew points crash once again into the 50s, the 40s, and 30s. And by the time we're waking up uh, Sunday morning, the boundary of this cold front will be somewhere off the coast of the southeast into the Gulf of Mexico and about to make its way through Orlando, Florida. And yes, this cold front makes it all the way to Miami. Okay, so this will be your first Florida clearing cold front of the fall. It absolutely will clear Florida for sure. And just dry, comfortable air for days. Okay. I mean, you go all the way out to like 11, 12 days out and it still shows it. Um, so what does this bring as far as temperatures? Well, we don't know the exact low temperatures, but what I do know is if you live in the deep south, you're going to have a, another period of just highs in the 60s and low 70s, but lows in, in the 40s, maybe low 50s. So some chilly air. Uh, this will bring even some frost potential, even for areas of like the mid-south, I'm betting. Um, but temperatures compared to average, here it goes. It takes over later this weekend, and then it lasts all the way through early next week. The blues you see is, you know, 2 to 5 degrees below average, maybe as much as 5 to 10 degrees below average in certain areas. And, guys, this lasts all the way through, I mean, the foreseeable future. In fact, you look at the 6 to 10-day temperature outlook, confidence is, ext confidence is extremely high to the 16th to the 20th of below average temperatures um, for the southeast, for even areas of the northeast, the central U.S. Yeah, I mean, even go as far out as the 18th through the 24th, guys. Below average temperature still looking likely. So, it's a mouthful. That's all I got. God bless all y'all. I'll talk to you in the morning. Stay safe out there.